What if I told you NASA's latest discovery could shake the foundations of religious belief? From the depths of space to the surface of distant worlds, new evidence is emerging that's forcing us to question everything we thought we knew about the cosmos. But before we get to that, make sure you take a second to subscribe so we can get to 1 million in the next 6 months. Now let's get back to it. The Hubble Space Telescope has been our window into the universe for over three decades. Launched in 1990, this incredible instrument has peered into the farthest reaches of space, capturing breathtaking images that have transformed our understanding of the universe and cosmos. And something new has just emerged that is shocking all Christians. But before we get to those details, we need to understand something really important first. Hubble's journey wasn't always smooth sailing. Shortly after its deployment, NASA discovered a major flaw in its primary mirror. The images were blurry and unfocused, a huge setback for such an ambitious mission. But NASA wasn't about to give up. In 1993, they sent a team of space mechanics on a daring repair mission. These cosmic mechanics equipped Hubble with new instruments and fixed the mirror issue, giving the telescope a much needed vision correction. With its new eagle-eye view, Hubble began revealing previously unseen wonders of the universe. It captured light from galaxies billions of light years away, showing us glimpses of the early universe. One of its most famous images is the awe-inspiring Pillars of Creation, massive columns of cosmic dust and gas in the Eagle Nebula, where new stars are born. These pillars, spanning four to five light years in length, are more than just a pretty picture. They were a cosmic nursery, birthing new stars within their dense clouds. The colors in the image aren't just for show either. The bright blues indicate oxygen, while the deep reds represent sulfur. This color coding helped astronomers understand the chemical makeup and conditions within the nebula. But here's where things get really interesting. These pillars are constantly changing, shaped by the intense ultraviolet light from nearby young hot stars. This process, called photoevaporation, is slowly eroding the pillars. It's a cosmic sculptor, carving out these magnificent structures over millions of years. What does this mean for our understanding of the universe? Well, it shows us that the cosmos is far from static. It's a dynamic, ever-changing place where stars are born and die, where massive structures are built up and torn down over unimaginable timescales. This challenges the idea of a fixed, unchanging universe often presented in religious texts. But how does this new understanding of cosmic processes align with traditional religious beliefs about creation? It's a question that's sparking intense debate among scientists and theologians alike. Now, let's talk about a discovery that's truly mind-bending, the so-called Hand of God. No, it's not a divine apparition, but a fascinating celestial formation that looks remarkably like a human hand. This cosmic hand was captured by NASA's Nuclear Spectroscopic Telescope Array, which detects high-energy X-rays. What we're seeing is actually the aftermath of a star's explosive death, a supernova remnant. At the center of this hand-shaped nebula is a dense, rapidly spinning core called a pulsar. This pulsar, known as PSR B150958, is spinning at the mind-boggling rate of 7 times per second. As it spins, it generates a powerful wind of particles. These particles interact with surrounding magnetic forces and fields, creating the distinct hand-like shape we see. The energy involved in the process is enormous, producing X-rays that new star can detect. The fingers of the hand are high-energy particles being ejected from the pulsar, while the palm is where these particles collide with gas in the nebula, causing it to heat up and glow in X-ray light. Now you might be thinking, is this the actual hand of God? Well, scientists have a different explanation. This hand-like appearance is an example of a pareidolia, our brain's tendency to see familiar patterns in random shapes. It's the same phenomenon that makes us see faces in clouds or on the surface of Mars. But here's where it gets really interesting. This hand is helping us understand the life cycle of stars and what happens after a supernova. It's showing us how pulsars interact with the surroundings and distribute energy and matter into space. In a way, it's giving us a glimpse into the cosmic forces that shape our universe. So, while it may look like a divine hand reaching across the cosmos, what we're really seeing is the awesome power of nature at work. It's a reminder that the universe is full of wonders that can inspire awe and reverence, whether you view them through a scientific or religious lens. Let's shift our focus closer to home, to our neighboring planet Mars. 
Recent studies have revealed something truly shocking about the red planet's past. It turns out that Mars, now a cold, dry desert world, may once have been a lot more like Earth. Scientists have discovered intricate networks of valleys on Mars, particularly in the southern highlands near the Hellas Basin and around Huygens Crater. These valleys look strikingly similar to river networks on Earth, like the Yangtze River. This suggests that water once flowed freely on the Martian surface, carving out these impressive features. But we're not talking about small streams here. These valleys are up to 2 kilometers wide and 200 meters deep. That's some serious flow of water. And it wasn't just a brief wet spell. The evidence suggests that Mars had liquid water on its surface for extended periods, possibly between 3.5 to 4 billion years ago. Now, why is this such a big thing? Well, where there's water, there's the potential for life. At least life as we know it. This means that Mars, which today seems so inhospitable, might have once had conditions suitable for microbial life to emerge and thrive. But it gets even more interesting. Scientists think that besides possible rainfall and rivers, groundwater and melting glaciers may have played significant roles in shaping the Martian landscape. It paints a picture of Mars that was once a dynamic, water-rich world, a far cry from the dusty red planet we see today. This discovery has huge implications. It challenges our understanding of planetary evolution and the conditions necessary for life to emerge. By comparing Mars's history with Earth's, scientists can better understand what makes a planet habitable and how these conditions can change over time. The ExoMars mission, a collaboration between the European Space Agency and Roscosmos, aims to send a rover to Mars to search for signs of life beneath the surface. There are even plans to bring Martian examples back to Earth for detailed analysis. So what does this mean for our understanding of life in the universe? It suggests that habitable conditions may be more common than we thought, even if they don't last forever. It opens up the possibility that life might have emerged on multiple worlds in our solar system alone. Now let's turn our attention to the star at the center of our solar system, the Sun. Scientists have recently made a fascinating discovery about our nearest star, one that's making us rethink everything we thought we knew about solar activity. It turns out that the Sun has a heartbeat. Well, not literally, but solar flares. Those intense bursts of radiation from the Sun's surface produce signals that, when graphed, look remarkably like heartbeats. These signals are called quasi-periodic pulsations, or QPPs for short. For years, these pulsations puzzled researchers. They couldn't figure out where they came from and what they meant, but a recent study published in Nature Communications have shed new light on these mysterious pulses. The research team analyzed data from a medium-sized solar flare that occurred in July 13th, 2017. What they found was not just one, but two distinct pulsation patterns. The primary pulse occurred every 10 to 20 seconds, originating from the base of the current sheet. That's the region where magnetic field lines break and reconnect during a solar flare. A secondary, softer pulse with a 30 to 60 second interval was observed across the entire current sheet. Now, why is this important? Well, understanding these pulsations could be key to predicting and potentially mitigating the effects of solar storms on Earth. Solar flares and coronal mass ejections can disrupt satellite communications, affect power grids, and even pose risks to astronauts in space. But it goes even deeper than that. By decoding the sun's heartbeat, scientists might be able to develop better early warning systems for these events. It's like learning to read the sun's vital signs, giving us a heads up before it unleashes a major storm. Moreover, this discovery opens up new avenues for studying the sun's magnetic behavior. These pulses provide insight into the complex processes occurring in the sun's atmosphere during flares, processes that are usually difficult to observe directly due to the intense heat and radiation involved. And here's where it gets really mind-bending. This discovery might have implications for our understanding of other stars too. If similar pulsations can be detected in distant stars, it could provide valuable information about their flare activity and magnetic properties. As we approach the peak of the current solar cycle, expected around 2025, these findings will be crucial for predicting and understanding solar weather phenomena. It's like we're learning to take the pulse of our own star, and in doing so, we're gaining a deeper understanding of the rhythms that drive our solar system. So, what do you think? 
how might this new understanding of Sun's behavior change our relationship with our planet star? Now let's venture beyond our solar system to one of the most exciting discoveries in recent years, the identification of Kepler-186f, the first Earth-sized planet found within the habitable zone of its star. Kepler-186f orbits a star called Kepler-186, which is classified as an M dwarf or a red dwarf. These stars are the most common type in our galaxy, making up about 70% of the stars in the Milky Way. The planet is located approximately 500 light years away in the constellation Cygnus. What makes Kepler-186f so special is its position within its star's habitable zone. This is the region, often called the Goldilocks zone, where conditions might allow for the existence of liquid water on a planet's surface, a key ingredient for life as we know it. While we have found larger planets in the habitable zone before, Kepler-186f is the first to match Earth's size closely. It completes an orbit around its star every 130 days, receiving about one-third of the energy from its star that Earth gets from the Sun. This places it towards the outer edge of the habitable zone, suggesting it might be more like Mars in the terms of energy it receives. Despite its Earth-like size, there's still a lot we don't know about Kepler-186f. Its mass and composition remain uncertain, though based on its size, scientists suspect it's likely to have a rocky surface. We also don't know anything about its atmosphere, if it has one. These factors are crucial in determining whether the planet could actually support life. The discovery of the Kepler-186f is part of a broader effort to find and characterize potentially habitable worlds. It demonstrates that Earth-sized planets in habitable zones of other stars do exist, boosting optimism about finding other potentially life-supporting planets. This finding has important implications for future space missions. NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite and the James Webb Space Telescope are designed to build on discoveries like Kepler-186f. These missions aim to find more Earth-sized exoplanets and study their atmospheres, potentially detecting signs of life. The study of exoplanets like Kepler-186f also helps us understand the diversity of planetary systems in our galaxy. By comparing these distant worlds to planets in our solar system, scientists can gain insight into planetary formation and evolution processes. But it's important to remember that being in the habitable zone doesn't guarantee a planet's ability to support life. Many other factors, such as planetary magnetic fields, atmospheric composition and geological activity, play crucial roles in the planet's potential habitability. So what does the discovery of Kepler-186f mean for our understanding of our place, cosmos? Are we alone, or is the cosmos teeming with Earth-like worlds? As we uncover more secrets of the universe, we're forced to confront our beliefs and expand our understanding. If you made it all the way to this part in the video, you may qualify for our membership, so you might want to listen closely. It's an exclusive area where we release videos that we cannot show to the public yet. You'll get to see everything first and learn about truths that we cannot reveal anywhere else. If you want to learn more, hit the link on the left of the screen or check out the link in the pinned comment.